Hello and welcome to another edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm your host for this week, lead writer William Weisbaum. And speaking on behalf of the entire narrative team, I would like to apologize that I am not Mark Abent for Bug Smashers. Sorry. Today we will be looking at the Tyrannus system, as you can see here on our beautiful star map. Look at that. We can switch from 2D to 3D and get an even more beautiful view. Simply gorgeous. Well done, Turbulent. Uh, Tyrannus features an A-type main sequence star and four planets. This unclaimed system is best known for having a bunch of asteroids, way more than you're picturing. Like, okay, not, not that many. That's picturing too many asteroids, about half of it, somewhere around there. Perfect. And the other two things that the system is known for is uh, being part of the Arena Commander sim cab game where uh, the Broken Moon map takes place in Tyrannus. And it is also part of the infamous crime spree of Keller's Run. And we'll talk more about both of those later. But first, let's go check out this sun. Look at that. As I said, it's an A-type main sequence star, also known as a dwarf star, an A-type dwarf star. You can see that it has this awesome white glow going on. It's a younger star, and it's about two times more massive than uh, the sun in Seoul. Uh, it lacks strong stellar winds, and because of that, there isn't much going on in the way of X-ray uh, emissions. So for all of you who are hoping to go to Tyrannus for its X-rays, I'm sorry. Doing a lot of apologizing so far. From there, uh, we can talk a little bit about the history and discovery of Tyrannus. It was first discovered in 2478 by the famed UNE uh, survey ship Mythic Horizon. Of course, a big part of the legacy of Mythic Horizon is the fact that the parish soon after discovering Tyrannus, they were sadly struck by, uh, in while exploring the asteroid belts, uh, there is a lot of asteroid motion going on in Tyrannus, and the death of the Mythic Horizon was a good reminder at the time during this major expansion of just how dangerous exploration could be as you're exploring these new areas, and you're never quite sure what's going to happen. Uh, the first world is Tyrannus 1. It is a rocky dwarf planet, and it has no atmosphere, and it is way too hot to live on because of its proximity to the star. Uh, the main thing to note here is that Tyrannus 1 is home to the famous face of Tyrannus, which, uh, which is an iconic image taken in the first scan where we're supposed to be able to see a human face on the planet's surface. And there is a lot of rumors and scuttlebutt going on about secret aliens or ancient human spacefarers who got out here centuries ago, even though most scientists you'll talk to will say that it is just a play of the landscape in shadows but I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, well, I mean, the scientists already decided, but you can have a contrary opinion. Uh, from there, we can now head out from Tyrannus 1 to the system's two asteroid belts, Tyrannus Belt Alpha and Tyrannus Belt Beta. And these are very dense, very active belts, in part because of how young the system is. Um, there are people who risk the danger of mining here, but for many of the UE's main mining company, it's so vital in the resources you get there, it's kind of the risk reward doesn't quite pan out. So they have foregone um, getting license here. So there's still a lot available, but uh, independent operators kind of take on a lot of risk uh, going out here, um, not only because of the belts themselves, but also because of outlaws. Um, the inner belt, Alpha, is slightly safer to navigate, not only because it has more safe approach vectors and wider travel lanes, but because the outer belt is closer to the green zone. So there's a lot more traffic out here which draws in outlaws and makes it a bit of a hunting ground. Uh, in general, there's so much rocks and asteroids and stuff floating around the system that it becomes difficult to do quantum travel sometimes and outlaws are fully taking advantage of that. Uh, from there, from the belts, we head to Tyrannus 2 and it's broken moon in orbit nearby 
As I mentioned earlier, this is the site of the famed uh, Arena Commander level Broken Moon. And what ended up happening is Tyrannus II, when the system was first discovered, because the UNE did not claim the system as one of their own, there was a lot of um, availability here. And so a company known as Ophion Incorporated uh, secured Tyrannus II to do terraforming research. And because they were trying to rush along, save costs, push this very experimental technology, and also participated in some very shady labor practices, it ended up being a huge disaster. And they shattered the mantle of the moon, spraying debris everywhere that still uh, surrounds the planet today and rains down fiery death on the world below. Um, it is just frequently bombarded and very dangerous. Um, there is a growing trend nowadays for tourists to come visit the Broken Moon, specifically to recreate what they love from their favorite game, Arena Commander. And so they fly out here and stage mock battles and take photos of themselves. But that is not recommended because of the system being relatively dangerous. Um, from here, from Tyrannus 2, we can head out now to the third planet, Tyrannus 3 and it is located on the edge of the green zone and it is a smog planet who uh, supposedly is the source of the system's name. It has such massive storms and Tyrannus is an ancient god of thunder. Um, of course there's competing theories about how the system got a name. Some people claim that the thunder was in reference to uh, ships of the time trying to process the sound of asteroids colliding together which made a deep kind of rumbling on board, um, competing etymology theories there. Uh, so the, um, the storms are very dangerous that not very many settlements would be able to last on the surface. Instead, the main habitation here is a research station known as um, Bethor, which was established in 2536 to study weather control techniques. Um, because, you know, Tyrannus was pretty much open territory for shady research projects. Uh, the station itself has expanded over the centuries and has become a full-fledged settlement for Tavarin um, and human expats to live there. Uh, the large surge in Tavarin population happened when a outlaw pirate gang tried to take over the system by contracting with a large a uh, number of Tavarin mercs who at the time were considerably more affordable than their human compatriots doing owing to the recent Tavarin wars. Um, and so a lot of the Tavarin remained in the system after this failed attempt by the pirate gangs and took up settling here. Uh, they, you know, run a significant portion of the shops and stores here. Um, and for being so out on the frontier, it's a, it's a pretty civilized area, at least one of the more civilized you're going to find in the system. Um, and from there, uh, you know, there's rumors going around that the station might be having troubles with a local crime signal trying to take it over and that the Tavar and the humans may be trying to resist it or participating in it, but that's only rumors for now. It's kind of hard to confirm these things. I guess you can say the better a syndicate is, the less you know for sure what it's doing. Uh, heading out from Tyrannus, we, Tyrannus 3, we head to the last planet in the system, Tyrannus 4, a gas giant. Uh, not much here except that uh, it was nearby that the uh, Keller had part of his infamous run. Uh, for those of you who need a refresher, the famed criminal Dean Keller uh, had killed an undercover advocacy agent on Spider, and, um, and it was in the no-kill zone on that station. And so both the advocacy and the outlaws were after him. So he went on a system, uh, a multi-system flee, trying to run away from everyone who was after him. And part of it happened in Tyrannus IV, um, where the bounty hunter had followed his trail here and encountered him. So yeah, so that's it for Tyrannus, a really kind of volatile system not only because of the asteroid activity, but also just because of the growing outlook concern, as well as the Tavarin settlement that's growing here. So we'll have to see where it heads in the future. But for now, thank you 
so much for joining us here. And thank you to the subscribers for making shows like this possible. And hopefully we'll see you around soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.